In this video, we're finally starting our upgrades on our Cayman GT4. In this series, we're taking a completely standard Cayman GT4 from a stock road car all the way to a purpose-built track car. But we're not doing it all at once. We're gonna be doing it upgrade by upgrade, and we're gonna be data logging the difference each upgrade makes to the chassis as we go along, so you can see exactly what effect those changes make to the car. It's been quite a while since we made our last YouTube video with the Cayman GT4. That's because in this series, we're trying to take it to the next level. We've been working hard in the background with VBOX Motorsport to get the right kit together so we can bring you a different way of displaying the data. A way that is much clearer, more succinct, and it also shows how the suspension upgrades have an effect on the car in a very, very clear way. In our other series with our BMW M3, we've been using a different data logger to date that gives us differences in lateral G, lap time, speed, and it also means that we've been using a tyre parameter to measure tyre temps, and that's how we've been gauging how the upgrades have an effect. So we've been judging it mainly on lap time increase, driver feedback, and what the tyre parameter is showing us with how the tyre is performing on an overall lap. For this series, we wanted to take it to the next level and show you the data in a much more real-time view. So we've moved across to the VBOX Video HD2 system, which is made by VBOX Motorsport. It comes with two high definition cameras, which overlay directly with the data. Whereas before we were using a GoPro alongside our data and we had to overlay the two together, which sometimes was a bit clunky. Whereas this is a direct overlay and it's part of the data. So there will be no mismatch in frames. It'll be exactly what you're seeing in the data. However, that's not why we moved over to this kit in its entirety. The main reason we've gone over to this kit is for these sensors here. So there's four of these sensors. To the eye, they look quite unassuming, but what they're gonna to give to you as a viewer and to us as engineers is live feed data of the tire temps. As we apply each suspension upgrade throughout this series, the ultimate goal is to generate more grip. As the final point of contact between the car and the ground is the tire, this is where we're focusing to see how well the upgrades are having an effect over the chassis and generating more grip by using the tire more effectively. A way to measure this is by looking at the temperature distribution across the tire to ensure that that tire is being used to its most optimum around a lap. As standard, we'd expect to see the outside edge of the tire being overheated and overused due to a significant lack of camber as standard. In fact, we've already seen this, not only on multiple customer cars, but with our own, when we did just the Donington evening session out on track, we absolutely ruined the outside edge of our tire, completely blistering the outside edge. And that's because we were overworking the outside strip and we we're effectively lifting the inside of the tire off the ground through the corners due to that lack of camber. With a car that's got too much camber, you'd see the opposite. You see the inside edge, mainly under braking, would be red hot and would start stripping the tire away because there's not enough tire in contact with the ground under heavy braking zones in a straight line. So there is a fine balance to achieve when finding the optimum camber settings for your car. This is where these sensors will come in to really help us fine tune that and identify any areas that will be an issue or any geometry settings that are too far or not enough. The sensors supplied by VBOX are 16 channel, 25 hertz sensors. This means that each sensor, there's four of them in total, one for each tire, has 16 points of contact with the back edge of the tire. That's 16 individual temperature readings, 25 times per second. That is constantly being updated on the live feed, on the screen, so we can see with the overlay of all the data and the video footage, exactly how that tire is working at every point around that circuit, through every single corner, slow and fast, down the straights, under heavy braking, under hard throttle, so we can ensure that across the entirety of the lap, we're getting that tire to work as well as possible. This is really significant because the usual way to do this and the way we have been doing it is with a tire pyrometer. So that means that when the car comes back into the pits after several laps, you push a probe into three points on the tire and take an inside, middle and outside reading. This is still quite accurate and given the temperature spread across the tire, 
but what it does give you is an overall average of how that car acted over seven laps. It doesn't pinpoint issues that might have occurred under heavy braking zones or through specific corners where there was or wasn't enough camber. These sensors will show us that exactly so we can pinpoint the setup to get this car working at its most optimum. Not only are we using this kit to get our data as accurate as possible and as live as possible so we can fine tune our settings like never before and show you the data like never before, but we're also gonna be relying on driver feedback because suspension is still a very subjective subject. You can have the best performing tire in the world all around the car, but it might not drive nicely. It might not have the right balance, the right front to rear distribution on throttle, off throttle, how it turns in and responds to that input. That comes down to the driver. So for this series, we're gonna be hiring professional drivers in the form of Chris Diamond and Leighton Clark, two guys who have a lot of experience in Porsche chassis in the racing world, and they're gonna be giving us the exact feedback after they've driven the car, so we can also make changes to the setup based on their feedback. So that hand in hand with the VBOX data is gonna give us the perfect recipe to get the perfect setups on the Cayman GT4 chassis. The guys are busy behind me working away, getting these sensors fitted to the car right now. We've got the first one fitted here for the front wheels. So we have it mounted just behind the wheel arch liner in the center line of the tire at an exact diff distance away from the surface of the tire to give the exact temperature spread we're looking for so we can get the entire width of the tire in the range. We're gonna finish getting these fitted up now, get all the wires routed back into the cabin and into the V-Box, but then gonna head out and just make sure all the kit is working before we head over to track next week where we're gonna start the upgrades on the chassis and get the videos coming your way for all the different suspension upgrades. Here's a little sneak peek from the next episode where we head over to Anglesey Circuit with the GC4 and you can see the tire temperature sensors in action in real time. You can see in the top left a little clip there of the sensors in full swing and you've got the display of the 16 channels across that tire in real time. It's really cool to see how you can go from red where we're overheating the compound all the way to blue where we're not working the compound hard enough and how the setup changes actually take an effect over how that tire is working in real time, corner by corner. So make sure you catch that episode because you don't want to miss this data. We've got all the sensors and the V-Box fully installed. In the next episode, we're going to be heading over to track and we're going to be taking the car in its completely standard form as it comes out the factory and we're gonna be applying our setup changes to the standard suspension to see what difference that makes out on circuit. The GT4 as a platform comes with a lot of suspension adjustment as standard, a lot more than normal other cars would come with. They have adjustable ride height, anti-roll bars, camber and tow front and rear. So we're gonna be utilizing all of that adjustment to install our settings onto the car and seeing what difference that makes over the stock suspension settings.